All right, we are recording. Good evening. This is Chris Draven Scott, and Leon is also on with me tonight. We may have some people jumping on a little late, or potentially it's going to be a real small crowd because of Hurricane Irma. That is um, that has a lot of people without power and without internet, and so. Um, so far, I've got rain here in North Carolina, but I still have internet, so um, I figured we'll go ahead and try to have the call and, and record it, and we'll be able to put that back in the group for people that are not able to jump on tonight. And so first and foremost, I definitely want to send out um, thoughts and prayers and positive energy and good vibes to anyone who is affected by this crazy weather, um, you know, be it yourself, your friends, your family. So, you know, we're definitely keeping everybody um, in our thoughts and prayers where it comes to that. So absolutely um, understandable that, you know, we've got some people that aren't able to jump on tonight. But um, what I want to focus on tonight is, um, you know, sh the, in, in the, the advertisement of the Zoom, it was, you know, I, surgery or no surgery. And we've had, a, we've had a lot of calls recently where we've talked about, um, you know, mindset and how important that is in, um, in losing weight, especially when it comes to severe obesity and compulsive overeating. We've also had um, a couple of amazing calls with people that um, have um, gotten into the 100 pound club. And so um, Leon's in, in the 100 pound club for um, Australia. We, um, Morgan was hoping to jump on tonight and she's just a number of pounds away. Um, to be in the, the 100 pound club for us we've got a lot of people in this group david stark and marco strowski and you know so many people that have been able to lose um a, just gigantic amounts of um of weight with isogenics products but what i want to focus on tonight is i've had a lot of calls recently um from people that are either coaching other people that have undergone uh, bariatric surgery or they're considering having surgery. And um, so there are just some really good, I think, kind of quick little facts that I wanted to share with everybody tonight. Um, and if anybody ends up, you know, watching this later or jumps on that is considering having uh, bariatric surgery, we're going to go through what the different types are. We're going to talk about what some of the pros and cons are of having um, those surgeries, uh, you know, briefly. And then we're going to get into talking about some of the recommendations on Isogenics products specifically and what ones um, I think are just absolutely a must if you've gone through bariatric surgery, as well as um, just some, you know, some tweaks and modifications that are really helpful um, if you're you're dealing with a, a bariatric surgery stomach. Um, so with that, what I want to do is um, just share a couple of slides, and I'll just talk talk to them. I wanted to leave some time at the end for Q and A. Um, and so we'll see how many people are on by the end of the call. It, it may be a shorter one, but hopefully, you know, even having this in, posted um, in the Lipoli group and, and potentially in other groups, having it available on YouTube as a link to be able to send to people um, that are either coaching, you know, people or, you know, for people themselves that are, that are thinking about having surgery. Um, I'm, you know, just really hoping that that will be a benefit and a blessing to people that are, are dealing with those issues. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen here. Leon, are you able to see the screen? Yes. Great. Let me see if I can maximize it here. Okay. This over. All right, perfect. Okay. So here are just some quick facts 
um, about surgery in case you are one of those people or you might be happening to talk to somebody that says, you know what, I'm thinking about having gastric bypass or I'm thinking about, you know, my doctor told me that I should really think about having surgery, whether, you know, it's the um, gastric bypass, gastric sleeve, um, lap band are, are really the three main types, but how do you qualify? Um, so one thing to know is that that's really dependent on your body mass index, so your BMI needs to be 40 um, to automatically qualify you, which is somewhere around 100 pounds. Um, since I don't have a calculator, I'm not sure, Leon, if you know it, that equates to in kilos. Um, Anyway, so we'll have to, I'll have to start converting in, in, both, in both ways. But um, if your BMI is not 40, but it's between 35 and 40, then they are, you can also be approved um, through your insurance to have bariatric surgery if you have um, some comorbid conditions. And I don't, when I had surgery, which is back in 2010, um, I think you had to have three, at least three, um, comorbid conditions, and I don't have them on the slide here, but I did write down um, some of the, the conditions are high blood pressure, diabetes, sleep apnea, depression, high cholesterol, esophageal reflux, um, and then there were a couple of other ones as well. And so if you, and those have to have been diagnosed by a doctor so that the insurance um, can see that, you know, you actually have been diagnosed with, with um, at least a few of those comorbid conditions. Um, so that's, that's how to qualify. Then there is, you know, once let's say that you do qualify to have surgery, um, every program is a little bit different, but typically there's, you have to go through um, a program that's somewhere between three months or maybe even six months of um, a program pre-surgery so that you can learn. It gives you a little bit of time to lose some weight before surgery really understand how the surgery is going to work and how you have to learn how to re-eat after surgery with you know your new stomach um, or whatever the if it's you know the procedures vary depending on if you have the ruin why um, the sleeve or the lap band and um, just some things to it that you know to expect as far as the nutrition is concerned you know what you have to be really careful of because you can run into some major medical um, issues, which, you know, personally I have. And so when I'm having conversations with people, um, you know, there's a lot of, of head nodding as I'm on the call with them where I'm like, yeah, my iron's really low. And it's like, yeah, you know, my, my hemoglobin is low. Yeah. Um, so, you know, some of those things that are really common for, for you to, if you, if you're hearing these things, um, you know, in conversations to know that, you know, they're normal. It's, it's common for people who have had surgery. So we went over that, you know, the main types of, of the, of the um, bariatric surgeries. And then when people say, you know, I'm not really sure if I want to have surgery, um, you know, I'm just, I don't know how much weight, like, will I lose? I'm like, am I going to gain it back? Here's a couple things on that. So it, there's, it's estimated that you will lose anywhere between 60 and 70 percent, that's the average um, of your excess weight. So my example here is actually my own. I, was, I weighed 240 pounds and I looked up the average, um, you know, which to me sounds kind of ridiculous, but if you like Google the average weight for a woman who's five foot four, um, it says anywhere from 111 to 145 pounds. And um, I mean, 111 is pretty small, but it does say depending on like small frame, medium frame, and it's also going to depend on um, lean muscle mass, right? We know muscle weighs more than fat. So if you've got more muscle mass, you know, then a higher weight is appropriate. So um, basically, I just use kind of that calculation of, you know, 95 pounds is about how much excess weight I was carrying um, when I had my surgery. And so, you know, 60 to 70 percent of that, it would be like, okay, well, you can estimate you're going to lose somewhere between 57 and 66 pounds. Well, I actually lost 100, 102 
pounds. Um, so it, it varies. You know, some people may not lose that 100% of their excess weight. Some people might be more in that 60 to 70% range. Some people don't even, you know, maybe it's 50%. It really it varies so much on how you start to eat again, how quickly, you know, you can out eat a surgery so your stomach can actually expand too quickly. Um, you can do what's called grazing, which is, you know, even though you're not able to eat big plates of food, if you're eating snacks all day long, you're still taking in the same number of calories. And especially if they're bad calories um, and, you know, unhealthy ones, you can gain that weight back or really struggle you know, losing the weight in the first place. And so the estimated amount of weight that you would regain is about 10% of the original weight that you start at when you're ready to, you know, go in to have surgery. So, you know, 240 pounds for me, um, you know, it would be quote unquote normal for me to gain back maybe 20 pounds. Like, so after I've lost as much as I'm gonna lose, you know, again, your stomach, your kind of your body normalizes as far as the process um, of, you know, of absorption of calories kind of normalizes, your stomach stretches a little bit. And so there is a regain that is absolutely 100% common um, to expect that. Now, for me, um, you know, I used that as a bit of a crutch when it was, you know, I've gained back five pounds from my lowest amount, and then it was 10, and then it was 15, and then it was 20, and then it was 30, and then it was 40. And so, you know, because I was not concentrating on good nutrition um, in 2010, I had not heard of isogenics. So, um, you know, for me, um, it was, you know, I just really went into panic mode when I started to regain that weight. And again, I have that conversation just, oh my goodness, multiple times a week. I've, I've, I've lost all this weight, but I'm gaining it back. And what am I going to do? Is isogenics going to work for me? So, um, you know, just to know, again, if you're coaching someone, um, this, this is normal <laughs> to happen. Okay. Especially if the um, behaviors haven't changed as far as, you know, being focused on good nutrition and um, exercise and, and mindset. Mindset is, is gigantic. Um, okay, so moving on. I don't know why this is not advancing. Okay, there we go. Um, there are going to be varying nutritional guides out there. So if, if you go online to say, okay, well, you know, what, what are the issues that, you know, someone's had bariatric surgery, like what should people be worried about? How much protein should you actually get? Um, you know, there, you're going to hear and, and see some different things, but there, there are some pretty common, um, things that you will see when you when you go online, and I just want to make a quick mention. There is a files section of the Live Fully group where I've uploaded articles. Um, some of the there's various nutritional guides there um, that address a lot of these issues. And so, you know, be sure to check that files tab as far as having that as a resource. Um, but one of the things that I see all the time on, on no matter what nutritional guide is that you have to change your eating habits and behaviors permanently in order to achieve and maintain your weight loss. And so I've got, you know, personal development in there um, because you guys, if there's a reason, an emotional reason why we become 100 pounds, 200 pounds overweight. You've probably heard me say this in, in previous Zooms. If that is not addressed, the surgery can only do so much. So, you know, you'll lose a bunch of weight because you're not absorbing calories and nutrients in the same way. Um, it, with the gastric bypass, the pouch that they create is about the size of a small egg. I don't have any eggs, but I have this little candle so I'll put it up here, you know, like your new stomach, like typically your stomach is like the size of a fist or bigger. Um, so if you're, you know, severely obese, it's going to be bigger than that. And then it's this, it's like a small little egg after the surgery. So, um, you know, just to kind of keep that in mind, um, 
there's, there's got to be a lot of behaviors that change and you really do have to relearn how to eat. Um, this happens in phases. So the first phase is going to be after, you know, surgery is done, but you're still in the hospital for about three days. And so they're going to have you on liquids and maybe just like some protein drinks. Um, and then when you go home, there's going to be a phase two. Again, I'm not going to get super deep into the whole process. There are, you know, check out the articles um, and the information, the documents that are uploaded in the files tab for that if you're, you know, someone's really interested in learning more about that. But it's really important to know as a coach before you suggest that somebody gets started. And here's why. Um, some of the main issues that are gonna come up all the time with bariatric surgery patients are things like protein. Protein is like the number one thing that we need to be considering. So if, if we're not getting at least you know, 70 grams, and that's probably for a, a female, men are probably even, even more than that per day. We can run into things like hair, you know, your hair falling out, um, skin elasticity, issues. Um, you can see in the, the parentheses down right in the middle of the page, um, calcium thiamine deficiencies, um, yeah, swelling, muscle, muscle wasting. Um, I've actually had to go into the hospital to have um, iron infusions because we can't absorb iron. Iron is, is um, just directly related with hemoglobin and hematocrit, red blood cell count, anything like that is going to be like, you know, lot in lockstep with iron. So especially for women, when we have iron issues, it can make you really dizzy to the point that literally like you cannot stand up because your iron levels get so low. And how often do you go check your iron? I mean, maybe post-surgery, you know, you're doing your doctor's appointments for, you know, the first year or, you know, year and a half or so. But if you get lazy about that, um, like I did, you know, you can end up really in trouble. And so I had to go in and actually have an intravenous um, iron infusion. And so when people, um, you know, again, think about conversations that you're having with people that it's like, hey, I started this isogenics, but I'm feeling really dizzy. You know, it's not because they did a cleanse, it's because their iron levels are in the toilet. Um, just some things to think about as far as, you know, being kind of careful and asking the right questions. Um, dairy is another, um, another issue that a lot of times is not a problem before you have surgery, but after it wreaks havoc on your stomach. And so I've got, you know, that last bullet that talks about dumping. Um, needs no more explanation. <laughs> like It is that. Um, it is a terrible cramping when you've eaten something that you ju it just does not agree with you. You're not able to digest properly. Your stomach isn't ready for it. So you could liken it to, you know, if you had a baby um, and tried to give that baby a steak, that was, you know, still on formula or something. It's like that stomach cannot handle that. And the only way, unfortunately, um, that you get through that period is trying things out. So some people have a lot of trouble with dumping, other people not so much, um, but there are just certain foods that, that can give you trouble. Dairy is one of those things, ice cream. Um, I know we have the best quality dairy as far as our shakes are concerned, but if I'm talking to someone who's had bariatric surgery, I will absolutely recommend that they start out with dairy-free or at least try one of each, you know, a little of both, because if they start out with all dairy shakes um, and then they have to return them all because they're having an issue with dairy, you know, typically, and that's a great question to ask before you even get them started, right? Is like, do you have any issues with dairy after your surgery? Um, <clears throat> another issue is water. So, I, my personal journey, I thought my weight loss was pretty slow when I first got started. And one of the tips that I, or one of the questions I got from um, someone who was coaching me was, well, how much water are you drinking? You should be drinking close to a gallon a day. And I just cracked up. I was like, there's no possible way because we're, again, we're talking about a stomach that's this big. 
that I'm supposed to have a gallon of water. There's no room for a shake. There's no room for food. Like there's, I would have no nutrition if I drank that much water all day long because my stomach would be full constantly. So be careful, you know, make that shift in your mind when you're coaching someone um, that's had surgery about water. Um, the approach, and we'll, the, on the next slide, you know, I, I talk about taking an approach of like, do the best you can with, with water. You know, drink as much water as you can, um, ensuring that you have gotten your meal in, that you have had your shakes, you know, you have had your vitamins and your supplements, like do the best that you can. Because again, if you, if someone's worried, like, oh, I'm not losing weight fast enough because I'm not drinking enough water, it is not worth having the deficiencies in nutrition, like some of these things that I mentioned here. As far as vitamins and supplements go, um, some of the more common ones where there's an issue besides the iron and hemoglobin, um, and, and again, like there's interesting things like um, it's suggested that you actually take iron with vitamin C together because it, it produces better absorption um, as far as those, the way that those two nutrients act together. So um, vitamin D, um, there's always a, an extra supplement that as someone who's gone through bariatric surgery is going to need extra vitamin D. Vitamin B12, there's actually shots um, that are required after surgery for a certain amount of time, but then you can switch over to um, oral supplements. And then calcium is also um, something that is often really deficient. So, um, you know, keep those things in mind when, um, you know, when you're, you're working with people that have had surgery. I've covered everything on that. Um, I've mentioned this before, super excited that when I reached out to corporate, um, you know, and asked, is there any information that is supported by Isagenics corporate as far as, you know, people who have had bariatric surgery? Um, and the answer was no at the time. And so they hopped to it and said, we think it's a great idea and wrote, came out with this article last December. Um, and so there's a lot of references in there about consult your doctor, consult your doctor, consult your doctor. So of course, you know, compliance wise, um, this video, my recommendations are based on my non-medical degree <laughs> background, having been a product user that tried some things and some, you know, some things worked and some things didn't. Um, this is completely, you know, Compliance wise, consult your doctor, right? I'm, 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 I'm right there in line with Isogenics, but there's some really good information in that article. And so you can find that on isogenicshealth.net. It looks like this. It's got like this little picture of a doctor here on the front. So, um, and that's also posted in Live Fully. You can do a search on, on that as well because we posted that a couple of times. And so everybody's situation's unique. Um, everybody, you know, some people have are on medications um, for other things that, you know, you also have to ask them, you know, some good background. So most doctors, I'm going to say most and feel pretty confident about that, um, probably haven't heard of isogenics. So after surgery, when they send you home and they want you to start drinking protein shakes, there's going to be a protein shake that's been recommended by their nutritionist or one that they know of in the hospital. Nine times out of 10, it's going to be Ensure. Okay. There are nine grams of protein in an Ensure protein shake. We have comparison charts all over the place in our groups online, you can Google them. Like, do not be afraid to have someone take in the Isogenics, you know, shake ingredients and, and have them show them to my doctor, is it okay if I use these instead? Because a lot of times people will come back and say, well, my doctor told me that I need to, to drink this type of a protein shake. It's probably because they don't, they don't even know about Isogenics. If they looked at the ingredients, again, nine times out of 10, they're going to say, wow, like, that's good stuff. Like no problem. Go ahead and use those. So encourage that. 
um, because that's a good thing. We want people to do research, especially doctors, to see what, what amazing products we have. Um, and because protein is the number one issue for bariatric patients, having Isopro, having 24 grams of protein in our shakes is like golden. So um, use that to your advantage. Um, again, know where, what phase people are in before you recommend a system. There is a gigantic difference between um, being six months um, post-surgery or five years post-surgery when you're talking to somebody about, you know, either losing weight or trying to maintain weight loss or, you know, I'm gain, I've gained some weight back. Where are you in your process as far as how long has it been since you've actually had surgery? Because it matters a ton. Again, these phases, I'm not going to go into detail, they vary greatly on how to eat, how much you can eat, what types of food you can eat. So don't just go recommending you know, a, a, a value pack or a 30 day system um, without asking some of these really important questions. Um, for me, I when I first got started, even being close to five years post surgery, um, I had a lot of trouble having a full shake. And so I had to break mine in half. So in the morning, you know, I'd get up, I would do a half of a shake, try to have some water, do, you know, do my ionics, and then I would have another half of a shake, maybe have a late lunch, have another half. So it was more of that breaking it up because a full shake is not going to fit in this little small egg of a stomach. Um, so... Um, you know, suggest that and make sure that people know that that 30 day system or value pack may last them longer. They may not be able to do two complete full shakes, um, depending on how long it's been since they've had surgery. Again, dairy free is a good question to ask. Um, if that's, if that's a way that they want to get started greens and fruits. Oh my gosh. Um, are, I'm like, you have to have them. You have, you must, must, must. Um, Unless you are just a master at getting in, you know, really good, like leafy green vegetables, raw vegetables, um, you know, raw fruits, the, the, the real good fruits like that are in our isofruits that have the antioxidants like the acai berry. And, you know, I mean, you guys, you've seen the videos, like, you know, the story about how much it takes today to get the same nutritional value out of fruits and vegetables that we got, you know, 50 years ago. Like it's just not the same. And so when your stomach is so small and you've had the surgery and trouble with absorbing calories, it is just, I keep saying, I mean, it's just golden. I don't know if there's a better word. Like it's just a miracle um, that we have these fruits and vegetables in powder form that can be added to shakes that can just be used as part of the water intake um, to get all of that nutrition. It's just, it's just amazing. So I always customize well, I don't say almost always, um, unless somebody, you know, refuses it. But I just think that the greens and the fruits are a must. Um, the vitamins, our vitamins are amazing. But again, there are certain things that surgery patients are going to be deficient in, like no matter what, that we're going to need extra of. Um, until there's a good side by side comparison of what exact you know vitamins um, are deficient and what you would need to take in addition to isogenics, um, you know the essentials. I just recommend that people stick with the vitamins that their doctors recommend. Um, I was personally sent to a website called BariatricAdvantage.com, and um, that is a site that specifically is for people that have had bariatric surgery and it makes it's got chewable forms you know if you're in one of the early phases where you actually can't take um capsules or you know you need to be able to do chewable so that it's pre-dissolved um you know before you swallow it like there's just things that are um that you have to take into consideration that i just i ought automatically say stick with the vitamin regimen that your doctor is prescribing. Um, Isoflush. Um, 
constipation, and we talked about dumping a little bit, constipation is super, super common. Um, I mean, I, I find that it's, um, you know, sometimes an issue for people that even haven't had bariatric surgery, but, you know, because of what your body is used to or not used to with regard to the amount of fiber and the amount of protein that you're taking in, when you go to two full shakes a day, it's a lot of fiber. So, you know, one of the things that I, I also um, usually kind of steer people away from in the beginning is the fiber bars. Um, because when you've got all the fiber and protein that are in the shakes, and if you're adding fiber bars in as a snack and you're not used to that, it's just, it's a lot of fiber and it can lock you up. So um, the Isoflush, I was actually coached that we you can have up to six. I'll double check that. But um, I know the recommendation is two before bed. If someone's having any issues with constipation and says that two is not doing it, um, I was recommended to do two in the morning, two at night. When that still didn't work, then I was recommended to do two in the morning, two at lunch, and two before I go to bed. Um, there's another all natural product that you can get from any drugstore, pretty much like Walgreens, Rite Aid, CVS. It's called Senna. That was recommended um, by my doctor to use if I ran into any issues with constipation. And then there are some, some good teas as well that you can have before you go to bed. Um, there's one that's called Smooth Move that uh, is one of my favorite. It tastes like black licorice. It's got like a black licorice um, anise flavor. Um, to it that I just love, but um, it, it, you know, try some different things, but be able to um, to recommend you know some different options to um, the people that you might be coaching around, um, kind of getting that regularity back um, after starting the shakes because your body will adjust. It just takes it just takes a little bit of time. Um, we talked about the do the best you can as far as water is concerned. Um, and that does, you know, water, water is one of the main things um, that does slow down weight loss. And so, um, you know, that's, that's one of the things that is really tough to get in. I'm trying to look at the time here. Okay, 8.30, I'm doing good. All right, this is the last slide. Um, personal development, mindset. We talk so much about that in this group, which is just critical, critical, critical that in order to maintain weight loss, there has to be a shift in mindset. Um, and so some of the, some of the things that I just want to, you know, this, this can apply to anybody. It doesn't have to be for people that deal with issues of severe obesity and compulsive overeating. But I can tell you that probably 9.9 .9 out of 10 people who do or who have suffered with that for, you know, any period of time, you know, if, you know, feeling like a failure, I hear all the time, I've tried everything, right? Like I just, it doesn't work. I've tried Weight Watchers. I've tried Jenny Craig. I've tried this. I've tried that. I've done Atkins diet. I've, I've eliminated sugar and white things and I, it's just like nothing ever works so why is this gonna work like this is just what happens I, I do it for a week and then I, I can't stick to it and I, I fall off and it's just how I am so this mentality of failure is going to be something that um, again if you if you're in this boat yourself um, I, I, I'm with you because again, like I've, I spent tw 20 years or more being a hundred pounds overweight. And so this, you know, this trying again and again and again and, and never being successful. Um, and I offer this to people that are watching this as a coach, um, to also keep that in mind as well. Um, there's going to be, you know, restarts and restarts and restarts and restarts and that's okay. Um, I, I have found is generally not helpful um, for someone to say, you know what, suck it up. You need to, you need to stick to this thing. You need to do it exactly how it says. And I don't want to hear any more excuses. Well, guess what? That's not going to work too well. Um, so, and again, this is this has been my experience. Um, so, you know that some of these these bullet points you know take into consideration that you're coaching you may need to kind of adjust 
um, your style or your approach with people. Uh, this, um, you know, a feeling of unworthy or undeserving to be healthy. Um, you know, like I had just, I completely, I went to his birthday party and I ate cake and pizza and a burger. And so I said, screw it. So I just, I haven't even been taking the shakes for like the past two weeks because I just, I blew it. Um, no, like, it's okay that that happened, but let's get back on the horse. Let's, you know, let's try this again. You are deserving. We all are deserving to be in a healthy body. And so really, you know, keeping that mindset, um, you know, be it in yourself or someone that you're coaching, um, the idea of insurmountable goals. Oh my God, Leon, like, I'm sure you can imagine like when you get started and you're thinking, how in the world? I mean, how in the world am I going to lose as much weight? I mean, I'm getting older. My metabolism is slowing down. Like there's all, I've tried everything already. It hasn't worked. I mean, the, the, when you're trying to pump somebody up and get them excited to start a, yet another nutritional system, right? Like, and you've got 100, 150, 200, 250 pounds. Like, realize how much, um, you know, isogenics does have to become a part of your lifestyle. That it's not a quick fix. It's not like, I mean, uh, you're not going to lose 100 pounds in 30 days. Like, this is something you are going to have to commit to. And that's mindset. That's routine. Even if you have to stop and start and stop and start and stop and start, it's okay. But this is, you know, something that's that's just going to have to happen. And and a lot of times this identity with obesity of that's who I am, I've always been fat. As a kid, I was chubby. I always had a belly. I was always made fun of. I mean, in grade school. Like I, in high school, was a college athlete. I always felt like I probably wasn't fat, but I felt like I was. And then where did I end up? A hundred pounds overweight because that was my identity. That's who I thought I was, was the fat kid, the fat girl, the girl that was fatter than everybody else all the time. Um, help people understand. And if you're watching this and you're saying, yeah, that's me, understand that that your body is not who you are. Um, help people to see who they are, like qualities and characteristics that are of the soul, of the spirit, that have absolutely nothing to do with the scale. Like, try to convince to throw the scale out the window for the first six months of, you know, of giving this a go. I mean, like, let's get down to the fact that, like, this body is not who you are. And this is years and years of an identity that has been built. So, you know, keep that in mind. Um, and then the very last thing that I have on here is just overload yourself or someone that you're coaching with love, compassion, patience, reassuring them that it's okay that they went to the birthday party, had the cake. That's okay. Like, let's start tomorrow. And we're going to do that a hundred times and that's okay. I'm going to do it with you a hundred times because I did it a hundred times and I still do it a hundred times. Um, encouragement, you know, constantly you're doing great. Um, you're doing fine. It's okay. I didn't drink enough water. That's okay. Let's do, you know, we'll do better on that tomorrow. Um, there is no perfect. And so, you know, it's difficult, I think, when people are starting isogenics to um, make all these modifications and, you know, this, they're already struggling with relearning how to eat after having had this, you know, crazy surgery and things that work for their digestions and things that don't. Now you want to introduce, you know, this whole new system. There's a lot of flexibility that needs to come into play here of, of really keeping in touch with the, you know, with the people that you're coaching, or if you're trying this out yourself, um, giving it a chance. You know, there were things that I was just like, oh, like, I just cannot do that. I'm going to have to try something else. Or let me try this a different way. I, I tell you, I've, I've learned about 200 different ways to customize every kind of shake, every kind of everything, um, so that I could still keep doing it but you know, making it my way. Um, and it, it still works. It still works every time. So, um, with that 15 minutes, exactly where I wanted to stop for Q and a, um,
let me stop sharing here since we're done. Stop share. Okay. Um, so with that, I'm gonna just hush. Um, and Leon or Al Jeanette, if you guys um, have any questions or any comments from experience, if you've run into any of these issues as far as coaching people, um, I would love to hear from you and, and just get some feedback. Or if it's, you know, maybe just some feedback on, on any of the, the things that I've mentioned. I just think it ties in with what you we talked about the last time we were on. You know, it's all about mindset and that. I have a few friends um, who have had the um, one of the operations, and um, yeah, it's it's a huge change for them. You know, they know what I'm on, um, but you know, you don't. It's hard. You don't want to force things onto people because if they haven't got um, a testimony of it, um, it just won't work for them. So uh, it was just interesting listening to what you're saying about it all. It all makes sense. Just you just makes me wish that they were on able to listen to it too. Um, but um, hopefully, I'll share it with them and see what they say. But um, no, awesome subject. Loved it. Good. Good. Thanks. Hey, Alginette, there you are. Hey. Hi. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I've been hiding, uh, busy around the house, so I apologize. Um, obviously, you can hear my dog in the background. So, um, now the other thing is um, that um, I do have a friend, Susie, who has a girlfriend that just recently had um, the surgery. And, um, you know, Susie has said, you know, I, I want to connect you to, but I guess it's maybe like, um, she, I really don't know her and like reaching out and how like I really make that initial like contact like okay um you know where are you at how are you feeling you know I guess maybe like breaking that that ice you know breaking that barrier um would be probably my biggest thing at this point because I do want to reach out to her um, and see how she's doing because Susie said she had a lot of self-confidence issues, you know, and that was one of the main reasons, you know, she wanted to lose, you know, a hundred plus pounds, um, but gain her self-confidence. And, and I know that, you know, that is huge for, you know, a lot of people when it comes to that, that you know, they're dealing with, you know, because they're dealing with all the internal um, emotions that, you know, that they're going to be facing. So I guess that's kind of like my question um, that I have right now. Awesome. Um, yeah, I think one of the, um, the greatest tools is um, just having the support in the group that when someone may want to just kind of get information on their own or, you know, kind of watch quietly or, or silently or behind the scenes. Um, you know, if you're Facebook friends and you can say, hey, I'm going to add you into this group. It's called, it's called Live Fully and there's a lot of good stuff in there. There's some videos and just, you know, daily support um, that sometimes, you know, people may want to just ease into the conversation. Um, the other thing that I have seen other people do with me is just say, you know, hey, I know like you, you've had, you had that surgery, right? Yeah. You know what? Um, my friend Chris also had the surgery and, um, she's had, you know, amazing success keeping her weight off and, you know, she talks about it all the time. And if you would ever, you know, want to talk to her or if you ever have any questions about anything, like I would be happy to connect you with, you could do that in a Facebook three-way message given my phone number. I mean, I don't care, you know, like, but just kind of bring it up that as is it's there as, um, a means of, of support, um, should they want it and they can take the information and do, you know, what they want with it or here, like, let me, let me, I'm going to text you her number. And if I if you ever need anything, you know, just give her a call. She's, she'd love to hear from you, you know, or whatever. Um, but I think using the group too is nice because like I said, sometimes people aren't able 
whether it's work or, you know, something like to get onto the calls, or maybe they like to go back and watch the recordings, like in the privacy of, you know, like whenever they want to, or, um, you know, who knows? So I think I'm um, just mentioning that, you know, we do have this available, obviously. Um, oh, uh, Jill Berth, um, is um, in Isogenics 100 Pound Club. If you Google or YouTube um, Jill Berth, her story will come up. Um, I think you've seen it before. I mean, it's just a tear jerking, like incredible story. Um, Leon, do you have a video? Did you do a video of your journey? Um, I think I did somewhere. Yeah. I don't know all over the place so i mean and, and i know that um you know the hundred pound club um has a you know our, our website that you can you know just drop somebody a link and be like hey you know there's tons of people that have you know have had a lot of success um oh well if that well that wouldn't apply if they've already had you know surgery if they've already um lost the weight but um you know, we do have the article on, on isogenicshealth.net. Um, but I, yeah, just really, I would say connect them with me. Um, there are some other people on um, the health and action team that have had um, surgery and a lot of times are on this call. So I, if I personally, you know, I'm not available at the time, I'm able to connect them with someone else that's had, you know, I know what people have had, what surgeries. Um, so I think in the initial conversation, just to let, you know, people know, hey, I know, you know, how, how's that going for you? I know you had that surgery. And um, depending on, you know, some people, I mean, I, I know in the beginning, I, I didn't really want to offer it. I was embarrassed about it and didn't want to offer that I had had gastric bypass surgery. But when you lose a hundred pounds in less than a year, it's kind of like <laughs> somebody's going to say, you know, like at some point it's like, well, I mean, obviously I'm not going to the gym every day. So like, you know, you must've had surgery. Um, so I think it's totally cool just to say, you know what, if you want to keep it private, there's this group, you can just kind of browse around on your own, or I have a friend who's gone through it, who's super open. That's what she does for a living. She talks about it all day long. If you ever want to chat, you know, connect us. Okay. Yeah, that's um, kind of where, you know, I've, I know that uh, my girlfriend, Susie, she's uh, pretty close with her. So, you know, and some, I, I've, I've found that, you know, and, and it's, it, they shouldn't be ashamed, you know, that, that, that they've chosen to do this. I mean, people choose to do things all the time. And, and um, you know, that was the thing that um, Susie's like, she's very private, you know, she's like, doesn't want people to know. And um, so, you know, and like you said, after you've lost, you know, so much weight, then people kind of like, yeah, like, okay, like, I, I know something, you know, there, but like, I don't want to pry into her life. I really don't, you know, know her, but I want to open that door. So thank you for saying that because I can give that information to, to, you know, my girlfriend and then she can pass it along. And, you know, that, that way the door can be opened in that sense. And she can have that support and still be in her private life. Um, and kind of like, slowly understand basically what she's going through and what she's dealing with from this point forward. Shame is going back to that identity. It's years of feeling shame. It was for me. I don't even know what I was ashamed. I'm just of like not being able to be skinnier, you know, like there, I mean, shame is, is I, it, I think I mentioned on every call that, you know, gifts of imperfection, you know, with Brene Brown talks about, um, about shame and, and unworthiness. Like that's just even before the surgery. So then to, to have to go to that level of fixing, you know, of something I couldn't even lose it on my own. I had to go off and have this surgery, you know, like, 
I, I mean, I, I felt that way. And so even though it doesn't seem like that would make sense, you know, it just absolutely is a part of like your identity, your mindset, um, even before you've lost the weight. So it's like during the process and after I've made the mistake before, whereas having done, you know, in a year and a half of personal development and owning my own. So when I first started Isagenix, I didn't use my, I never use my pre-surgery photos. I use the ones where I started at where I had gained the weight back, which was only 182. It wasn't 240 because I was like, well, they can see those, but I don't want anybody to see the ones where I was 240. Right. Like there's a, there, it, and it's, it sounds like cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs, but it is real. Like that. You're just like, Oh, I just, I, I just, I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to admit it. I don't want people to know that I chose to make this decision, that I couldn't do it on my own by going to the gym and eating healthy, that I have to go have surgery. So I opened my big mouth, you know, kind of recently actually, um, where I thought it was totally okay to just call it out. I was in a room full of people and I knew that someone had had um, gastric bypass. And so now having kind of gotten, you know, through that issue of shame, um, just kind of blurted out. I was like, well, you know, you know, you had, you know, gastric bypass and literally it was like, you could hear a pin drop and it was like, oh God, what did I just do? What did I say? Um, and so you just never know, you know, what, how people's privacy and how, like, how much they want to put it out there. Um, it's, it's, it's real. Um, so it's just, it's an, it, it's a great, great question. It's a great point to bring up because, you know, you think you could talk about it just like anybody else. Like, Hey, what are you doing to lose that 10 pounds? But for someone who's been living with like a high degree of um, guilt and shame and unworthiness for years and years and years of their life, like usually aren't too excited to say, yeah, I decided to go have, you know, surgery because I couldn't do it any other way. It's just, it's hard. Um, so yeah, hope that was helpful. Yeah. Very helpful. All right. Anything else, guys? We've got a, just a couple of minutes. That's all good. All good. Sorry, I'm just doing work. I love it. He jumps on even when he's working. I love it. <laughs> well, thank you, too, for jumping on tonight. I appreciate you. And um, this obviously was recorded, so we'll put it in the group. And, um, you know, please continue to refer people uh, to the group and to me personally. And um, we're going to keep trying to change people's lives and help them change their health. Sounds good. All right, guys. Sounds great. All right. Be safe out in this crazy hurricane weather, and uh, we will see you next week. Thanks, Chris. All right, guys. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Bye.